everyone, my name is Asmina and welcome back to my channel. I know I've been gone for a little while, but I'm back now and I have a lot of books to share with you guys, so let's just get right into it. So you know when you're like stressed or a bit sad and you end up on a shopping spree online somewhere? This is kind of the result of that. Uh, I buy books when I am sad, so... Yeah, so the first one... So the first book I have to share with you guys is actually probably the most exciting and this is the one I didn't buy uh, myself. I got it as a present. That is the book we've all been waiting for for the past two years and it is finally here. And that is the new illustrated Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. It's finally here. And look at how gorgeous this is. Now, Goblet of Fire is my favorite in the Harry Potter series. So I am extra excited to finally have this and I'm really excited to actually uh, reread it and go through it with the illustrations. So this is one of the World Cup that they go to in the beginning of the book. Here is Draco Malfoy. Look at that. So yeah, I've actually gone through it just a little bit just to skim uh, through all of the illustrations and I think this one has the best illustrations of the book so far. So um, if you didn't know, a little background, they are re-releasing uh, the Harry Potter books one every year in these big beautiful illustrated editions but this one was supposed to come out last year um, but the, the illustrator Jim K um, needed a bit more time and so it got delayed one year <laughs> but uh, yeah it's out now so um, I will leave a link uh, to it in the description and to all of the books that I'll mention today of course but uh, just in case you didn't know and you're still uh, wanting to get this uh, illustrated edition of the series then the Goblet of Fire is out! Yay! Okay, these aren't really in any order, by the way, I just stack them up behind me and we'll just go through them as they are. So the next one is The Goldfinch by Donna Tartt. So uh, Donna Tartt wrote The Secret History, which is one of my favorite books, and it was actually one of my favorite books of last year, um, if you've seen that video. And yeah, I've been meaning to, to read more of her books, and I think she has this one and another one out. So she hasn't written that much. Um, but uh, this one, I think actually this is more popular than The Secret History, or at least it is more well known. But I love The Secret History, so I'm very excited to, to get into this. It says, Age 13, Theo Decker, son of a devoted mother and an absent father, miraculously survives a ca catastrophe that otherwise tears his life apart. Alone and rudderless in New York, he is taken in by the family of a wealthy friend. Theo is tormented by longing for his mother, and down the years he clings to the things that most reminds him of her. A small, captivating painting that ultimately draws him into the criminal underworld. So I guess the, uh, the painting is called The Goldfinch? It's just a guess, but <laughs> I, think it's, uh, I think it's likely. I really want to read more Donna Tartt because her writing is beautiful. Then we have the beginning of a new fantasy series. Oh, well, it's not new. It's new to me. <laughs> Let's just put it like that. Um, this is Falling Kingdoms by Morgan Rhodes. So this came out a while ago, but this whole series was marketed as Game of Thrones for young adults. So it is a young adult fantasy series. And I mean, I love Game of Thrones and I love young adults. So I love all fantasy in general. And so I think this has that sort of vibes, big cast of characters, a lot of uh, political intrigue and hopefully some magic <laughs> or some dragons at the very least. Then I bought a couple of Stephen King books. Um, this was during the spooky period of the year and I really felt like, well, buying and reading some Stephen King. I ended up buying some Stephen King. I didn't end up reading it yet. But um, anyway, I got The Shining and I got Salem's Lot. But yeah, the only Stephen King books I read were his autobiography and then It, which I never actually finished. But I did like what I read from it. I, it, it was just really long <laughs> um, and I listened to it on audiobook and I just kind of stopped listening to it at some point but I do want to read more Stephen King and these are some of his most famous books or at least well The Shining definitely is. I was in a thriller buying mood and this is also related to the secret history because I'll tell you why in a second. This is If We Were Villains by M.L. Rio and this is probably the book that comes up first if you search for books similar to The Secret History by Donna Tartt or, you know, books in that have a similar atmosphere to that. Um, that's what I looked up and this one came up a lot and, and I also watched some people's videos. I'll link a particular one down below um, that I specifically remember 
watching and then wanting to buy this book because they recommended books uh, if you liked The Secret History and this was at the top of that list and so that's why I bought it. So reading the back it seems like it has a pretty similar premise as The Secret History. It says when tragedy strikes one of the seven friends is found dead. The uh, rest face their greatest acting challenge yet convincing the police and themselves that they are blameless. So if you've read The Secret History that's sort of where the story starts as well for that. So yeah. I'm looking forward to getting into this and telling you guys what I think of it. Now we have kind of a random book. Um, I watched a video of someone's nonfiction November uh, TBRs, I think, or recommendations. If you didn't know, nonfiction November is just uh, sort of a, a thing going on where you read a lot of nonfiction in November. And someone talked about this book and it sounded really appealing to me for some reason. So this is Mastering the Art of Soviet Cooking. A Memoir of Food, Family, and Longing by Anya von Frentzen. So it says, born in a surreal Moscow communal apartment where 18 families shared one kitchen. Anya grew up singing odes to Lenin, black marketing juicy fruit gum at school, and longing for a taste of the mythical West. In this sweeping tragicomic memoir, Anya recreates seven decades of the Soviet experience through cooking and food and reconstructs a moving family history spanning three generations. I don't know why, that sounds interesting to me. And the video that I watched of the person recommending this book said really great things about it, that it was very funny, um, but also very atmospheric and, and uh, well, I imagine a bit sad as well. But um, that sounds great to me. So the next book that I'm gonna show you I actually received from a company called Osusume Books, and they offer a book subscription service of specifically Japanese literature. So they will send you a Japanese translated book and uh, I collabed with them and they sent me this book to, to read and review and tell you guys about them. This is The Devotion of Suspect X by Keigo Higashino. This is what it looks like and it is a thriller. Uh, it says read the book that sold over 2 million copies in Japan and became a national obsession. And this is m their description of the book. So it says a single mom's quiet life is shattered when her ex appears at her door one day. She murdered him after a big fight and the investigation begins, but nothing quite makes sense for the detectives. The book won five, the, won five of the biggest Japanese mystery awards and the movie was made in Japan, Korea and China. I watched the Japanese one and it was equally amazing. Higashino is one of the most popular mystery writers in Japan and this book is my favorite. I still can't forget how speechless I felt after finishing the book. So this is uh, handwritten by the person running this business called Asusume Books. So yeah, thank you very much to them for sending me this book and I am very excited to actually get to it and read this thriller and let you know what you guys think. But if that sounds interesting to you and if you want to read more Japanese literature, I'll definitely leave, leave the link in the description to their uh, website and just check it out and see what you think for yourself. The next book is one I received in a Illumicrate box that I didn't show you guys. I think that was August, August or September, probably August. Um, this is Gideon the Ninth by Tamsin. I, I don't know how to say that. I'm really, really sorry, and I don't want to butcher it. This person. This is a really gorgeous book. Look at that. That's like, you know, black like my heart. Without a dust jacket, it looks like that. It's a really, really pretty book. I don't know much about this, but some key words that I remember is science fiction, lesbian necromancers. So. Yeah, I don't need more than that. That sounds, that sounds different and awesome and I'm all for it. Okay, one pile down, still one more to go, guys. <laughs> We're getting there. I'm sorry if this video turns out to be a, a little long. There's a lot I need to show you since we've last seen each other or spoken to each other. I can't see you, but I imagine you there somewhere. You look good, by the way. The next book is a sequel to another one of my favorite books of last year, which was Shadow of the Fox. This is the first book in the series that I've read last year and I really, really loved. It was one of my favorite books of last year. This is Japanese inspired fantasy uh, about fox shapeshifters and other things. <laughs> I don't want to spoil too much, but it was awesome. It's one of my favorite books. And the sequel that came out this year is called Soul of the Sword and these are by Julie Kagawa. But uh, yeah, I really, really loved the first book. And if you are into Japanese inspired fantasy, think sort of anime like fantasy. It's basically like reading an anime, this one. So uh, I would highly recommend if you're into that. 
Uh, the next book is also one about Russia. Coincidentally, I didn't really plan this out, but this is a book that I've seen everywhere on Book Depository and all like Amazon. It was one of the best sellers. And this is A Gentleman in Moscow by Amor Talis, deemed an unrepentant aristocrat by a Bolshevik tribu tri tribunal. The count has been sentenced to house arrest indefinitely, but instead of his usual suit, he must now live in an attic room while Russia undergoes decades of tumultuous upheaval. Can a life without luxury be the richest of all? I don't know, people have said great things. I really like this cover for, for some reason. I think it's really pretty. This is like em embossed in gold. I, I don't know if you care about that, but I do. Yes. Okay, the next book is also a first in a fantasy series that I've been meaning to get to for a very long time. Uh, this is The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemisin, winner of the Hugo Award in 2016. So this is a fantasy series, I think it's only a trilogy, but the world in which this takes place I think continues on into a different trilogy, if I'm not mistaken. But this is one of these series that people have said is similar to another epic fantasy series that I've completely forgotten the name of. I'll just insert it right here. In the sense that I think it's a bit more difficult to get into, there's uh, a lot of details about the world and the characters, but once you get into it, it's supposed to be really, really good. That's what I've heard. It's one of those epic fantasy series that comes up, up a lot when people talk about the best, and I want to read more epic fantasy series so that I can talk to you guys about it as well. This is The Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle by Stuart Turton. Why is that R reversed? Does that make anyone else uncomfortable? Because it does me. I don't know if it has some kind of significance. Probably. It just makes me uncomfortable. This is a thriller that everyone talked about. I think it was last year. Well, it is a Costa Book Awards winner of 2018, so I think it was last year. But everyone was talking about it on Booktube, on the internet. Book Depository everywhere. I saw it everywhere. And there's also another book that has a very similar title. I think it's called The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. It's like so similar that a lot of people confuse the two. And I definitely did, even though I haven't read either of them. But I kept seeing them and I thought it was the same book, but it's not. I think they're both thrillers. So that makes it even more confusing. Anyway, this says at a party thrown by her parents, Evelyn Hardcastle will, will be killed again. She's been murdered hundreds of times, and each day, Aidan Bishop is too late to save her. The only way to break the cycle is to identify Evelyn's killer. But every time the day begins again, Aidan wakes in the body of a different guest, and someone is desperate to stop him, even after escaping Blackheath. Okay, so this is a weird sort of Groundhog Day thing, but with murders. The next book I'm going to show you guys is another one of these books that I've been meaning to pick up and read for a very long time. And uh, here we are now. And it is also a book about books, which I didn't know. And I love me some, some of that. So this is The Shadow of the Wind by Carlo Ruiz Safon. Yes, uh, it says this book will change your life. An instant classic. That's a bit pressuring, but okay. It says, one cold morning in 1945, a man brings his 10-year-old son Daniel to a labyrinth library of forgotten titles hidden in the old city of Barcelona. Allowed to choose one book, Daniel pulls out The Shadow of the Wind by Julian Carax. But as Daniel grows up, several people seem inordinately interested in his find. What begins as a case of literary curiosity turns into a race to discover the truth about the life and death of Julian Carax and to save those he left behind. So maybe sort of a semi-thriller or maybe just a detective story involving books, maybe a very magical book. Maybe it has magical realism. I'm just saying things. I don't actually know, but it sounds like it could have some sort of magical realism to it. The next book is a nonfiction, and I think this is also one that I picked up because of watching this person's video of where they recommended nonfiction books. I will totally link that down below because I don't remember who it was. This is The Feather Thief by Kirk Wallace Johnson, the natural history heist of the century. So this is a true crime book, a true crime nonfiction novel about a real heist involving some feathers. Hold on a second. 
One summer evening in 2009, 20-year-old musician, pro musical prodigy Edwin Rist broke into the Natural History Museum at Tring, home to one of the largest ornithological collections in the world. Once inside, Rist grabbed as many rare bird specimens as he was able to carry before escaping into the darkness. Uh, Kirk was waist deep in a river in New Mexico when his fly fishing guide first told him about the heist. But what would possess a person to steal dead birds? And had Rist paid for his crime? In search of answers, Johnson's, um, Johnson embarked up upon a worldwide investigation leading him into the fiercely secretive underground community obsessed with the Victorian art of salmon fly tying. Okay, that went into a direction I wasn't expecting. And also, that was a very long sentence to read, and I'm apparently very bad at reading aloud, which is ironic. I apologize. Anyway, it sounds interesting, and a lot of people have said pretty good things about it, so <laughs> I'll let you know what I think. Okay, almost there. This is the second to last book I have to show you before we open that. Did I mention that before? I probably didn't. I'm so good at this. I will also open the Illuminicrate Illuminicrate box behind me afterwards. Anyway, this is The Crimson Petal and the White by Michael Faber. This is a book that I used to hear a lot about from Jen Campbell. I will link her channel down below. If you don't watch her, you should. She's an awesome booktuber, but this is, was one of her favorite books, I think, at some point. Maybe that has changed, I'm not sure. Um, but that's where I originally heard about it, and I became interested in it again because I started rewatching Downton Abbey. I love that show. There's so much drama. It's ridiculous. It's great. And I, so I wanted to read more um, novels, I guess, set in the Victorian era. And surprisingly, there's not that many. But this was the one that was recommended the most uh, when I searched for that. So this is about a prostitute in the Victorian era. And also, slight side note. I don't know if you can see this, but the logo of the imprint, I assume, is also the BTS logo, just saying. Anyway, this says, so begins this irresistible voyage into the dark side of Victorian London. Amongst an unforgettable cast of low lives, physicians, businessmen, and prostitutes meet our heroine, Sugar, a young woman trying to drag herself up from the gutter any way she can. Be prepared for a mesmerizing tale of passion, intrigue, ambition, and revenge. I've never read anything like this before, so I'm very interested to see how I like it. Maybe I won't. I'll let you know. Okay, and the very last book I have to show you before we open the box is a fantasy novel, another one that is the first in the series. This is Poison Study by Maria V. Schneider, and this is the first book because if you saw my last, I think it was in my last book haul, I had bought the third book, um, Fire Study, because I found it in a secondhand bookstore for really cheap. Um, and it was in very good condition, but obviously I hadn't read or bought the first one. So that's what I did. It's Fire Study. It's one of these um, young adult fantasy series that came out a while ago. It was one of the first ones, I think, and it's very highly regarded in that genre. So I wanted to give it a, a chance, finally. So the first one, Poison Study, is... It says, imprisoned for murder, Yelena is, Yelena's punishment is death unless she accepts the position of the commander of Ixia's food taster and risks assassination from poison daily. So um, there's a lot of death in this book haul, I just realized. Um, yeah, that's totally not intentional. Uh, that was all the books that I bought recently and that I'll probably get this year because it's already too much. However, this isn't done yet because I still need to open uh, Illumicrate, and there's one more book in here, of course, and I don't know what it is. This is October's or September's box. I will find out in just a sec because I really forgot and I'm a bit behind on this. I apologize. It's October. <laughs> it says right here, with great power, October 2019. Ooh, this is actually really pretty. This, um, I guess it's a tint, it's a tea tint, some magnetic bookmarks you can see there we go <laughs> four magnetic bookmarks from hold on a second do you know what i have no idea and it doesn't say shatter me oh okay sorry i've never read that series but i know it's very popular the shatter me series by tahara mafi they were also wrapped in this um page from a book which kind of made me a little upset the the ti the title or the chapter name is called the olive tree 
I don't know if this is a page from the actual Shadow Me series or what, but I'm kind of a little bit, a little bit sad that this happened. This looks like a huge pin. <laughs> um, uh, it says a porcelain bells, so that is from the porcelain series, fantasy series that I've never read, but I've heard great things about. There's some um, cards. Ooh, these are actually really well designed. I have no idea where this is from. I will assume some Victoria Schwab because Illumicrate really loved Victoria Schwab, and it's I'm so upset because I still haven't read any Victoria Schwab, but I keep seeing it everywhere and I keep like this mug that I have right here is from an Illumicrate box and it is a Victoria Schwab uh, Darker Shades of Magic thing, which I haven't read. Um, this, okay, again, I have to read the card. I think it's something like that as well. Yes. <laughs> okay, it says the villain's character card set. Uh, keep all your favorite villains close to hand with a stunning card set featuring the characters from V. Schwab's series. I was right. There you go. I don't get any points for that. I don't know why I would, but um, just so you can see as well. They're really well designed. Look at that. Make this first one. Yeah. Really have to read that series. <laughs> when you dream, do you dream of stars? Maggie Stiefvater. Is this from Raven Boys? This is a pouch, I guess. It's just a simple pouch, but um, I could use that. I have a lot of like art supplies and stuff that I sometimes need to carry around with me, so that'll come in useful. Then we have two identical magnets. I actually have some of these that I put on my fridge already, but and it's upside down, of course. That's what it looks like. And there's two of them. But they're magnets, so I use them on my fridge to hold up things. Like the basic white girl that I am. And finally, the book. I don't know what's up with me today. I, ha I haven't filmed in a very long time. I apologize. Sometimes this happens. Um, so let's see what the book is. I'm very good at opening things. Yes. Ooh. Angel Mage by Garth Nix. Wait, this is the guy who wrote the Abhorson series, isn't it? Yes, it is. The best-selling master of fantasy, Garth Nix, delivers a rich and compelling swashbuckling adventure. Ooh, I like that word. I like what that means. Dear reader, Angel Mage is, like all of my books, something I wanted to read myself. That is the best reason to write a book. This time, what I wanted to read was something that felt like one of my favorite books without being some sort of pale imitation. Which book? The Three Musketeers. Oh, by Alexandre Dumas. But as always, talking about a book is nothing compared to just reading it. I hope you will snatch up your hat, swirl on your cloak, take up your sword, and essay forth into the night of the adventure I have set before you. Um, also, has really nice um, red sprayed edges. So it doesn't sound like I need to read any of the other books that he's written before to read this, which is good because I don't have any of them. So yeah, let me let me know if you've read any of these books and what you thought of them or if any of them sound interesting to you. I will leave links to them in the description so you can go pick them up for yourself um, if you feel like it. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching guys. I apologize if I was seemed a little bit off in this video I haven't filmed in such a long time. It does that to you sometimes. Um, but yeah, thanks so much for watching again and I'll see you next time in a new video. Bye.